everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video tutorial. Today I'm going to be sharing a video using clearly besotted stamps and also a memory box die. So the products I'll be using today are this stamp set here, one in a million from Clearly Besotted. It's got some amazing flower stamps that stamp in the corner of your cards. These are really great for building floral arrangements already. So all you have to do is stamp and color it. It's very fun and a great way to practice with coloring. Another product I'll be using is the Spectacular Happy Birthday die set. So the die set actually comes in three pieces. You have the word die itself, which cuts out the word happy birthday. Then you have an outline for that, for that word. So when you cut it, you would then have the outline border around that die. And then finally, you have a third border that goes around that entire piece. You can do a lot of really fun layering with these three die sets, or with these three dies, I should say. So I'm gonna be using these today in my card and we're going to be creating this floral card that you see here. This card was really fun to create because I got to really enjoy just coloring the flowers and seeing what kind of color schemes I wanted to use for the card. I ended up going with a neutral as a navy color, so it's kind of a different neutral, but I think it really helps the flowers pop off of this card and it gives the flowers a lot more life. And I also utilized a few little embellishments. I stamped a background here using some Simon Says stamps, and I also used some Nouveau Drops to add some embellishments to the flowers. So why don't we head on over to my desk and we can get started in creating the card, and I'll share some tips and tricks with you along the way, and also a fix for something that I ended up messing up on. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my stamps mounted into my Misty stamping tool, and I'm gonna use some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink to go ahead and stamp these images down onto my paper. Originally, I was planning on stamping these onto my white card base here and have a one layer card. But the problem is, is that I ended up messing up and I wanted to be able to salvage all the coloring that I had done on these flowers so that I could go ahead and use them still and not have to worry about having to redo the entire card all over again. So I'm going to go ahead and color these in, show you how I colored the images and I used a variety of different colors. I used some yellows for the daisy looking flowers. Now for the leaves, I'm going to bring in an aqua color actually and work with some aqua colors to add just a totally different color to these floral arrangements. Because if you look at flowers, first off the leaves that are around the flowers are all different colors. They don't all look the same. And you also notice that there are some aqua colors in different leaves depending on what kind of flower it is. And I wanted to be able to incorporate some of those kinds of the colors into my floral arrangement. So that's why you're seeing a few unconventional, let's say, colors than what you would normally see in a floral arrangement. Now I'll also mention that I did not show you the coloring for both arrangements because I colored them both exactly the same. So what you're seeing me do here on this bottom right hand corner, I did exactly the same thing on that top left. So now I'm working on the rose, and for the rose, I wanted this to be able to have a nice shaded appearance, so I'm working with some lighter red colors. These are very light reds, and I'm working in some shading, and as I build up the color, that's giving me the depth that I need for the flower, but also letting it have some highlights so it looks dimensional. So this is a great way to be able to work with colors. You start with something light, and then work towards something dark, and you'll get a much more contrasted appearance. So moving on, I'm coloring in some of the smaller images using a few different markers. In some cases I use three markers and then for something smaller like this I'll just use two simply because they're a smaller area and you don't need to work as hard to add the depth and shading you want to make them look more realistic. For these smaller flowers I wanted them to have a really light tip very similar to what I've done for most of the other flowers and leaves in this card panel. So I started off by feathering in the mid-tone and then using my lightest color, I blended that out really, really lightly. So that way I have a very soft edge to these flowers. I was really loving how these colors turned out on these flowers. And honestly, in the end, I was really glad I made the mistake that you're about to see me do here when creating a background for this as I was thinking it was going to be a one layer card. I love how that navy just makes these flowers pop in the finished card. Here I was thinking, oh, well, I'll just blend some ink onto the background and kind of give it a nice soft halo. But 
I had two problems with this. One, it was just a little too light, which I could have fixed by going over top of with more ink in a darker color. But the real issue was the masks. The masks I had stamped using some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink, but I had stamped it onto post-it tape. And the post-it tape, the ink takes a lot longer to dry. So when I removed the masks, you see I have a more dingy mint green instead of a true mint green. And I just didn't like it. I was like, oh, this is awful. So I decided, oh, I'm not going to redo this card. I don't want to recolor all these images because I loved how they turned out and I, it took a long time to do. So I decided I'm going to cut them out. I went right up along the edges of all that coloring and made sure I took a black marker and just kind of went along the edges of the paper to hide the white core. This is such a great tip that has been around for forever. And I have always used it when I've done fussy cutting right up to the edges, which I don't do very often. But when I do, I always make sure to outline the edges because that's going to hide the white core and make your images look finished. So this is when I decided I wanted to put it onto a navy background. So I've got my flowers generally arranged to how I'm going to like them. I'm die cutting my sentiment with that spectacular happy birthday die from Memory Box. And I'm using my Sizzix Sidekick machine because it's, this is such a small, narrow die that it fits inside the Sizzix Sidekick so easily and I'm able to cut all these out very quickly using just that small die cutting machine right on my desk. So that's really handy and I love using that die cutting machine for small dies. It cuts any brand of wafer thin dies. So I die cut this happy birthday a bunch of times from some surf blue cardstock from Simon Says Stamp and I'm layering them up to create a dimensional sentiment. I layered all of these so this did take quite a bit of time to do but in the end it's totally worth it because you get a really great dimensional effect. If you want to make this go a little quicker you could die cut these with adhesive on the back side or spray them with spray adhesive but I am a big fan of using liquid glue so I went ahead and used my PPA matte adhesive my favorite liquid glue. And now I'm going to adhere my floral arrangements to the card. So I've added foam tape along each piece and I'm laying it down onto each corner of my navy cardstock. Now I'm bringing in some stamps. This is a stamp from one of Simon's birthday stamp sets. It's been around for a very long time. It's one of my very first Simon stamp sets actually. And I used the sprinkles that were in there to create some nice dots in the background. I just felt that that kind of added a little bit of depth to the card. And then I'm also going to bring in this Best Mom Ever stamp set. This was a retired stamp set actually from Simon Says Stamp, but has been re-released because it was so popular and everybody really wanted it. So we re-released it over Mother's Day and I used some of the little dot images to stamp in the background, which I will end up filling in with a colored pencil. So I also took some white gel pen and I added some white dot detailing just around some of the different areas. Again, adding more depth. I'm adding a bunch of different sizes of dots basically to my background. And then for my final finishing touches, I used some Nouveau drops on top of some of the centers of the flowers. And I also added just a few little swipes of Spectrum Noir clear glitter into some random places around the different flowers and leaves to help give a little bit of sparkle. It's kind of like this, this little hint. Every now and then you see a little sparkle when you're holding the card. So I hope that today's video has inspired you to use the new Clearly Besotted One in a Million stamp set. I absolutely love it and I have had so much fun coloring it. And I know you will too if you get this set or if you already have it. Definitely start some coloring and just enjoy the process of using whatever medium you're most comfortable with. And I also hope that you've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. And thank you again so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I will see you again very soon with more videos to share. Until then, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!